Hi, this is Scott. And this is Josh from Lead Dev. Today we're talking about algorithms for arrays. One of the most common strategies that shows up in the technical interviews is the two pointers algorithm. It involves traversing through an array with two pointers to find pairs of numbers. There are two types of variations for this algorithm. The first variation involves having a slow pointer and a fast pointer that moves at a different pace. These are more commonly used in linked list problems, and we'll talk about them in future videos. The second variation involves having two pointers, one at the front and one at the end of the array. We will gradually move one of both of the pointers toward the center. Now that we know what the algorithm looks like, let's apply it in an interview. A common two-pointer interview question that comes up is two-sum and its harder variation three-sum. So how common do you mean when you say common? I'm glad you asked. I once had a full interview loop where two separate interviewers asked me the same exact question. Feel free to pause the video and slowly read the prompt to yourself. Given an array of sorted integers, find two numbers that add up to a target number. Like any good interview candidate, we should never jump straight into the code. Instead, we should have a conversation with the interviewer to come up with an optimal solution. You can't pass an interview if you aren't solving the right problem. The first thing you should always do is ask clarifying questions. Some examples include, what does my input look like? Will the sum cause integer overflow? Let's assume that the inputs are valid. For example, we don't have to do any null checks. In interviews, it's okay to start off with a brute force solution. For this problem, we will iterate over all possible pairs of numbers in the array to find two numbers that sum up to our target. The runtime of this algorithm would be n squared. This is because we are going through all n elements of the array and we're comparing them with every other n elements. So n times n equals n squared. However, the first answer we come up with is rarely ever the optimal answer, especially if the runtime is n squared. Now, how can we find a better algorithm? Well, one way is to see if we can get any insights from our naive solution, or maybe even the problem statement itself. Another way is to ask the interviewer for a hint. It's always so much better to just to get an optimal answer, even if you had to get a hint, than not at all. And finally, my personal favorite strategy is to brainstorm algorithms to use based off of the runtime that you're trying to shoot for. You can pause this video to take a moment to think about this. Now, an improvement from a n squared algorithm would be a n log n runtime. Typically, n log n solutions involve sorting an array, which will take n log n, and then scanning through it to find an answer. Alternatively, if an array is already sorted, we can scan across each of the items and then perform a binary search on the remaining items. Binary search by itself is a log n operation, and since we're doing it once on each of our n items, it will result in a n log n runtime. In this problem, the array is already sorted. Now, whenever you hear that something is sorted, the first thing that you should always think about is binary search and how you might be able to use it. For this problem, we can scan through each of the elements and then do a binary search on the rest of the remaining subarray to see if we can find two pairs of number that sums up to our target. We'll start with our first index in the array, and then we'll do a binary search on the remaining elements to see if we can find a match. We'll start from the middle of our index in our subarray from ranges one through five. If our index plus our mid is larger than the target, that means we need to search the bottom half of our subarray. Alternatively, if our index plus our mid is smaller than the target, that means we need to search the top half of our subarray. We continue doing this until we either find our target or we find that there is no solution in our subarray. And then we'll just continue moving our index to the next element in the array and continue doing binary search until we either find some pair of numbers that add up to our target or we find no solutions at all. One step faster than an n lock and runtime would be a linear solution, requiring a constant number of scans through the array, where we have a lower pointer and a high pointer. We now have a starting sum. Because the array is sorted, and if we were to move the right index backward, we would have a smaller sum. By moving a left index, we'll create a larger sum, 
This is how we would use two pointer. We start with two indices in the array and we will scan through all our elements only once, giving us the runtime of the go of n. So now let's go to the live coding problem. So we pulled up the question and on the right you can see that we already have our optimal solution implemented. Numbers I see in C in example one where we get an array of input 2, 7, 11, and 15. And we receive a target number that we want to find which is 9. Okay, cool. Thanks Josh. So let's kind of walk through the coding example. So we're going to go ahead and initializing the left pointer with 0 and the right pointer to the last element of the array. So here's the loop that will go through all the elements of the arrays. And then we're going to take the sum compared to the target. We're taking 2 plus 15, which is equal to 17. If 17 is equal to the target, which in our case is 9, it is not. If 17 is less than the target, it is not. So therefore, we go into the else case, so we're going to subtract the right pointer by 1. Right, so continuing on in the second iteration, our L is still at 0 and our R is at 2 or the 11, 2 and 11, and we get th the sum of 13. So is 13 our target or is 13 equal to 9? No, it's not. Is 13 less than 9? No, it's not. So we have the same problem and we go into the else where we would subtract our R. So we move our R, which is currently at index 2, we subtract 1 from it and move it and change it to 1. And now we are at uh, 7. Awesome. Thanks, Josh. So the next iteration pointing at 2 and right is pointing at 7, like Josh said earlier. We're adding those two elements together. They're equal to 9. If 9 is equaling to the target, which is 9, it is. So therefore, we have our answer. So we're just going to return the result by taking the left plus 1 and right plus 1. And then finally, if we finish this whole entire loop and we don't have a answer, then we just return a default array. And that's it for the two-pointer algorithm. We hope this video have given you some intuition and knowledge on how to implement it if they, and how to identify it if they show up in your interview. Please leave any feedback or requests for other topic or questions that you want us to tackle in the comments below. Otherwise, if you have found this video helpful, please consider smashing that like button and subscribing to our channel to be notified of our next video.